యూత్ కి ఆ యూత్ కి మనం అది ఈ వాటర్ యొక్క ఇంపార్టెన్స్ తెలియపరచడం కోసం వెబ్నాస్ ఆర్గనైజ్ చేసి డిఫరెంట్ డిఫరెంట్ వెబ్నాస్ ని ఆర్గనైజ్ చేసి అవేర్నెస్ అనేది కల్పించడం జరుగుతుంది కనుక ఈ రోజు మనకి మేడం గారు రిసోర్స్ పర్సన్ గారు రావడం జరిగింది మీ అందరికి కూడా ఈ ఈ సెషన్ లో మీకు ఏంటంటే ఈ వాటర్ యొక్క ఇంపార్టెన్స్ మనం ఎలా ప్రిజర్వ్ చేయాలనేది అనే విషయాలు మీకు చెప్పడం జరుగుతుంది మేడం వెల్కమ్ టు ఎన్వైకే విశాఖపట్నం ఆ ఈ యొక్క ఈ రోజు కార్యక్రమం ఏదైతే ఉందో దీన్ని సంబంధించి మీరు స్టార్ట్ చేయాల్సిందిగా కోరుచున్నాం మేడం థ్యాంక్ యూ థ్యాంక్ యూ వెరీ మచ్ థ్యాంక్ యూ సో మచ్ సార్ and one request to the participants uh, if you are getting a pop up like uh, this is re- getting recorded so please say yes okay give your consent to that i'm supposed to inform you that and uh, i'll be sharing the screen i hope i'm visible Yes, ma'am. Ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Very good evening, girls. Uh, very good evening, sir. First of all, thank you so much for this opportunity to deliver this lecture on Catch the Rain, When It Falls and Where It Falls. Uh, this uh, seminar is being organized by Nehru Yuva Kendra, Vishaka Patnam, uh, Government of India and Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports, National Water Min- Mission, and ministry of jal shakti this is uh, dr p meryan puma in charge head of the department of biochemistry st joseph college for women visakhapatnam welcoming you to this seminar so the aim of this is to inculcate among the youth uh, their role again as to the need to conserve water and how to first of all catch the source the main source of water which is the rain and i'll be delivering on so many aspects here these are the contents and uh, coming to the introduction part how many of us uh, love rain i think uh, most of us people of all age groups they love rain right from children where they make the boats and that is its rain is considered to be very playful among the children when it comes to youth yes they want to drench themselves and enjoy that shower and when it comes to age also definitely they'll be enjoying this rain with their children that is a part of our life where we enjoy rain and what else we know that rain it is the most important source for water for all the living organisms right from the tiniest microorganisms to huge animals like us okay of course the sea animals whales and all they depend on water and this water comes from rain and the bad part or the saddest part of this is that water is taken for granted and it is the beautiful nature's gift that we have and we always take it for granted and as we have evolved as we got civilized we have been using this water a lot of water for agricultural purposes and it is overused in agriculture also just to keep on pumping and we also use this in industries and at domestic level and we keep on polluting this natural source which is the precious water and today we have been hearing about the depletion or decline in the ground water facilities and it is getting declined at an alarming rate mainly with respect to the fresh water now let us see why we need water we must understand that water is required for us not just to quench our thirst 42% of our biochemical reactions which are taking place in our body they need water then we all know that 70% of our body it has water of ourselves of our body also it has water 60 to 70% it varies and of course 70% of the earth is covered with water and when you look at the various categories of water that we have we have salt water as well as fresh water of that entire water which is present on the surface of the earth around 97.5% is salt water while only this part a very tiny part of 2.5% is the fresh water which we all of us are consuming and this fresh water also you should know that 79% of it is still captivated in the ice caps and glaciers 
while 20% around 20% of it is present in the form of ground water and this water 1% see here just 1% of it is the water which is present in the lakes and of course in the soil 38% of it is in the soil most of it is in the lakes while here you can see we lose some of it in the form of evaporation while water this much only is present in the living organisms while this much is present in the rivers this is some of the statistics of water now the various ways in which we are using this fresh water remember that we are using the fresh water 65% globally is being used for agricultural purposes next is the household purposes 11% 11% for industry use it's balanced here and 6% by industries 3% by manufacturing units 2% for mining while 2% is for electricity and gas production this is the international scenario coming to the indian scenario it is a little different 89% of it we use it for agriculture because we are agricultural based country and 8% goes to the municipality 1% to the industry and around 1% we lose it for other sources and coming to the domestic level we are familiar with this at home we'll be using water in several ways and we have various levels of houses and complex formations so we can see a single family we have many single families existing uh, in one house or in duplexes in their homes and uh, around 35% is used by this industry is used 7% commercial complexes they use 23% apartments they using 21 residential families are using 35 apartments triplexes quadruplexes all these things they are using 21% while here we are representing even the public authority the government and uh, own properties they are using 14% so out of the entire thing domestic use it's going to around 56% while the rest of this is going for commercial public authority and industries and coming to the water demand here is a projection of water demand right from 2006 to 2050 in comparison with china we are given here see so you see that the current need of water per day is more in india as compared to the biggest country china well in us of course it is very high let us see with a neighboring country and by the year 2050 it will be like this it will be increasing it is it's going to go around 165 and here the various sectors in which it is being used 83% in agriculture here again it's saying 5% for domestic and 12% industry water use shares and here coming to this little bit of water maths here the fresh water resources in india they are around 4000 billion cubic meters cubic meter means 1000 liters out of all this the available water is 8183 sorry 1869 billion cubic meters and uh, non available water like the runoff water the water which is present in the rivers which we uh, which is flowing and all we cannot use all that so it is 1084 billion cubic meters so you look at the water which is being lost by evaporation it is 1047 billion cubic meters out of all this available water the usable water is just this extent and here you have ground water and surface water and we are depending on both these sources that is we are just harvesting this 395 billion cubic meters of water in the form of bore wells while even the surface water we are just using these two sources and all our activities are depending on them coming to the industries how they are using we have various sectors the thermal power projects they are using 87.9 while the other engineering aspects the pulp the textile steel sugar fertilizer industries and all the other industry sectors they are using it while most of it is going to this thermal power plants this is how the water is being used so here i try to reflect the demand of water in our day to day life but now we have to see whether this demand is being met with the rainfall with the rainfall and how is the ground water level availability in various areas so in recent years all of us have observed that there is a change in the rainfall pattern in before one decade there was a scarcity in the rainfall but now we are seeing that 
yes we are getting rains heavy rainfall because of the change in climates and all and since we are the residents of andhra pradesh let us see this image over here at this corner you can see that the rainfall increase is between 90 to 95% there is an increase in the rainfall and there is a proportional increase in its usage in our day to day lives also as well as in various sectors that i have projected and according to the andhra pradesh water resource information and management systems see the rainfall versus ground uh, ground water level projection so here these uh, this one it is the rainfall pattern from july till jan so you can see from july to jan we have lots of rainfall and here also we had little bit of heavy rainfall so we charge we received january i think first week if you can remember we had little bit of charge and coming to the ground water level because of this increase but still it is getting maintained only till here no increase no decrease because of lots of harvestment and the depth of ground water levels see uh, this is the depth of ground water levels this part it is indicating uh, less than 3 meters a okay, 3 to 8 meters 3 to 8 3 meter 3 meters 3 to 8 meters 8 to 20 meters and this is about 20 meters of ground water levels see this the ground water levels they are decreasing at an alarming level you can compare the ground water levels here coming to the west godavari district they have lots of ground water okay, lots of ground water is there while we have lots of surface water here this is the visakhapatnam our residential area where we are residing <coughs> less than 3 meters we have just 15% of it 3 to 8 we have maximum of it that is 49% 8 to 20 meters we have 35 percent and more than 20 meters we have 1 percent and we are harvesting this particular thing a lot <coughs> excuse me i'll skip this now what is the need of the day the need of the day is to capture the rain so we have to capture the rain and what we have to do what will happen if you capture the rain this is going to increase the ground water levels and thereby we will be able to meet the increasing needs of us so keeping all these aspects in view that is the increasing demands for rain water and that we can capture it jal shakti abhiyan catch the rain theme was launched by our honorable prime minister shri narendra modi ji on 22nd march 2021 this jal shakti abhiyan its uh, theme is catch the rain where it falls when it falls and this uh, through this program they were trying to communicate to all the people that you know there is one pre monsoon time and monsoon time if you start preparing in the pre monsoon time you can definitely capture all the rain during the monsoon time thereby meet the needs when rainfall is not there we have a span of months wherein we don't get rainfall so keeping that in mind this particular jal shakti abhiyan was started so they said that from march 22 march 2021 to 30th november 2021 so this is the pre monsoon time and the monsoon time during which you can capture the rainfall so let us see the main motto of jal shakti abhiyan So the National Water Mission Ministry of Jal Shakti they have launched this campaign that is catch the rain and I have told you the tagline once again catch the rain where it falls when it falls okay and here they have come up with this rain water harvesting system abbreviated as RWHS and based upon the suitability of the climatic conditions based upon the soil strata in various places. they have come up with various designs various ways by which we can capture this rain water and they wanted people to participate actively in that in this particular program so that you know we can meet our water needs so the points of focus i have discussed once again in india rain starts in june or july for us right so capture the rain for 100 days from there and then meet the needs for upcoming days these are the points that are focused in this particular program and we have various ways of rain water harvesting systems 
like the simplest ones are the roof catchment systems which i'll be discussing in detail because the youngsters who are here they can take this up very easily so from simple roof water collection systems which can be done at household levels to the next level that is which can be done in educational institutions uh, like our colleges and all and uh, to high rise buildings apartments in urbanized areas in um, universities in airports like that we can do this roof capture caption uh, sorry catchment systems then you have ground catchment systems which are man made then rock catchments which are natural and then collection storm water in urbanized catchments for recharge so all these are the various ways by which rain water harvesting systems were proposed so let us see few of them in today's Uh, talk so the components of this roof for this uh, rooftop systems they are the first thing is uh, see here is the list the catchment which is the rooftop then the conveyance which includes the pipelines which will be conveying them then the first flush separator which helps us in uh, leaving the first fall then filtration storage usage and recharge all these things i'll be discussing one by one so simple rooftop collection system say this is the house which has lot of roof so when rain fall comes obviously the water will be flowing down so they have to drain the water very carefully into tubes so that this water which is which should actually fall down during precipitation okay that should get collected this entire roof which we have we call it as the catchment area this will be collecting into drain lanes which are arranged so that the water flows according to the gravity and then these can be collected and stored in the storage tanks so you can do this quality analysis you can do some filtration you can do some sedimentation over here okay and this water which we are directly collecting it this is the simplest one you can use it for washing your cars or just cleaning the floor and uh, for even watering the plants gardening all these things we can do by the simple roof top water collecting system this is the simplest one so rain water harvesting systems in urban areas see roof catchment systems these are the very normal ones and these are quite flexible also like we can change them according to our house we can plan them based upon our economic style economic uh, you know the investment that you can put into it so it suits all socio economic levels of population both uh, in the urban big big apartment people they can do it even small houses they can also do it so examples of typical options that can be used in urban areas these include Uh, rainwater use in households as supplement public institutions high rise buildings in high density urban areas then collection of rainwater in industrial areas use of runoff water in airports and collection of rainfall from public open spaces for recharging these are the various options that we have when we are dwelling in urban areas so when it comes to high rise buildings what we can do we know that high rise buildings have a large roof okay here we have large roof large surface area is there so here you can have this plan this rain water inlets so that and you have to plan the sloping of this roof also in such a way that the water is collected from this terrace and it goes down through the pipelines and from here you can pump it into a suction tank here there they have some filters which clear if any sediments are there if any larger particles are there and from here you can pump them into collection tank which is equipped with sensors so that once it is clear then they can fill it up and here since it is filtered one you can pump it into separate water storage tank okay and they can use for some domestic purposes and all accordingly you have to plan it okay i can't say this is for drinking but upon appropriate treatment is yes, definitely you may use it for some of the domestic purposes but they have to plan the pipelines accordingly then the rainwater harvesting systems in schools yes schools also have lots of surface area lots of roof area and lots of uh, playground will be there if the playground is a open one definitely it is a natural 
rain water harvesting system so if it has little sand and all definitely it will percolate through that sand and they will act as a natural rain water harvesting systems but they also can have separate areas set up so that water can be diverted into them the rainfall can be diverted into them and slowly here this is the rain water diverted area where it is getting filtered and it goes down and this particular school it is collecting around 50000 gallons of rain annually 50000 gallons and thereby they are helping in uh, making this school a green school with you can say you know they are contributing to rain water harvesting and what are the components of rain water harvesting system let us learn about these things first thing is catchment area that is the roof so you should have a surface you know upon which the rain should be able to fall then this rainfall has to be diverted na no? so you should need some gutters or down pipes so that that rain which is captured from the catchment area can be channeled into the storage area then you need screens also screen so that any leaves which are falling any big items which are falling on the surface okay they should be removed the contaminant should not get added into the water so all the debris they can be removed using these screens and roof washer says whenever required you should be able to wash off regular maintenance should be there next you have cisterns or storage tanks if these are the containers where you store the water then conveying that is the delivery system see once the rain water has uh, you have harvested and placed in the containers you should treat them and again you have to pump it against gravity will be pumping into again other tanks then water treatment that is uh, you may have to add some additive so that uh, whatever that dust or some sand or something if it is getting added the sediment down and disinfection you may have to do there will be a filtration you may have to do all the equipment should be there that is what is water treatment then design considerations for roof rooftop catchment system so the materials that you are using for the rooftop catchment system that is the roof first they should be non toxic because the water will be falling on them and you are collecting them and while you are using this uh, roof you know it should not leach out any things they should not impair water quality that is the first criteria and one more thing the roof surface it should be smooth hard as well as dense so that water do not doesn't seep down okay and then precautions uh, you have to take to prevent entry of contaminants into storage tanks like you know when you have a open surface it's a top roof you have a open surface there you should not have uh, tree branches and all coming up if that is so birds nests will be there so that leaf uh, droppings or the bird nest droppings bird droppings all these things they get uh, they get added and uh, they may uh, block the things so uh, what they do is they have this first flush bypass which they put up initially before the water is pumped or the water is allowed to go into the storage tank so first flush bypass is there so that helps you to remove the things i'll tell you that and desired country considerations for rooftop uh, rooftop catchment system that is all gutter ends they should be fitted with a wire mesh screen so that leaves or other particles they don't enter next storage tank that should be very tightly fitted the roof and uh, uh, you know including light it should not go inside but you should have a small manhole car so that you know you can um, go in clean it and come out and flushing pipe it should be at the base i'll show you that and here the inner walls of that tank they also have to be designed in such a way that okay you can scrub the inner walls because something gets deposited uh, you have filters over there so if you have to wash it up if you have to scrub the things you should have the appropriate uh, provisions for that and one more thing is uh, you should have drains also you should have drains the drain should be down at least you know from the at the tap and the drains they should be at the base from the base they should be there around 10 cm from the base you can have a tap if it is there at the base it prevents entry of any of the particles into that and uh, you know it remains undisturbed what happens is when you are adding water you know it gets settled down the particles get settled down so at the base when you are putting totally at the base then definitely this dirt thing only will come off instead if you put it above the debris will be down 
and the settled water only will be coming out. So the sediment shouldn't get disturbed and affect the quality of water. All these are the precautions that they take. Now let us see the design aspect of rooftop catchment system. First thing is the catchment area that we should know. So we have all these are the various catchment areas. See buildings, uh, normal houses, apartments have such flat surfaces which can be our catchment area. They have the flat roofs. At times you have this, uh, this type of roofs or single pitch roof. When you have a house of this type, this is the double pitch roof. While here you have the hip roof and here this is the tent roof. We can have any such types of roofs and all these they can be used to have this water, rainwater catchment system. First thing before uh, thinking of this rainwater catchment system, you should think about the feasibility of introducing these things. That is, you should know uh, the size of the supply of rainwater that is required. You know, first you should have an idea of the rainfall, then the catch catchment area, then you have this runoff coefficient in a particular area. So here is an estimate. This using this equation, you can estimate the mean annual runoff from a given catchment area. So S stands for the rainwater supply per annum. R stands for the mean annual rainfall in that area. And A is the catchment, area of catchment. And C is the runoff coefficient. So by using this equation, the actual amount of rainfall supplied, uh, if you can calculate, you can accordingly plan the storage container. Okay, You can accordingly plan the storage container. There is no use of having big, big containers if your need is very less. And if you cannot have big containers, if you have small roof also. So according to the roof, according to the rainfall, according to the climatic conditions, uh, rainfall pattern, all these considerations are taken before uh, finding out whether you can go ahead with the rainwater harvesting system or not. And this is how we can calculate the catchment area. So the size of the roof, that is the catchment area. No? So you can calculate this. So you have to know the length. Okay, and then the width, multiply this and you get the total gutter area. Okay, say for example, here is an example which I have mentioned. You have a flat with a roof size of 10 meters into 12 meters in a particular city, which is receiving an annual rainfall of 800 meters square. So, the rooftop area is 120 meters square, while the annual rainfall is 800 millimeters. And here the total volume of rainfall, okay, annual volume of rainfall that, that this roof can receive is multiply these two and you get 96 meter cube of rainfall you receive. That is 96,000 liters. See this, 96,000 liters. So if you at all you plan it in such a way that at least 70% of the rainfall you can have it. 70% means of this it comes to around 67,200 liters. Okay, that means if you can capture this much of rainfall, that means you are meeting the need of 184 liters per day of a person. That means at least washing your legs, okay, meeting some domestic needs like flushes and all. Many of the things we can meet using this particular water. This is how they first initially uh, keep up with the criteria and calculate whether it is feasible and how we have to do it. Next, we have to talk about the storage systems. So we have many, many options of storage systems. So these storage systems, again, they are categorized into two types of storage systems. One thing is you have a ground storage vessel where you can put it outside, while some you have, which you have to put it underground, okay? Above, you can put some things on the soil itself. While some things you can install, you can just dig up it, Put that huge underground tank or a big storage vessel like sump you know we call it as sump here so such things also you can do it so what guides our choice here is the first thing is the technical aspect who is going to guide you who is going to come up with all those things and the space availability per home you should be in a position to come up with a big sum na? So every household cannot have such things below so you can have some tank outside that also guides you and skill availability Okay, you should have someone to do all that and cost, of course, everything is expensive, nothing comes for free. 
and the ground conditions loose soil clay soil what sort of soil we have whether this can stand over there then the local tradition also the local tradition what sorts of uh, vessels they prefer storage vessels they prefer that thing and requirements for storage systems yes you should definitely see that no insects go there that's why you should have that tight lid okay like even light should not go inside if insects like mosquitoes get go there yes that becomes the best place for them to breed dirt should not go there then uh, filter should be there so that leaves to coarse particles can get filtered then if at all there is any uh, excess thing is coming up you should be in a position to remove the surface water so you should have an overflow pipe a manhole should be there a sump and drain for cleaning also should be there then you should have this extraction system okay uh, like uh, once you have stored in the container again you should be in a position to pump it to some other tank above na so that extraction should system should be there so soak away to prevent split water or uh, like forming puddles near the tank any like the surroundings they should be clean they should be like thick pits thick pits so that if any excess water is flowing off also they should be uh, be going down next additional features are the sediment trap even devices to uh, monitor the water like sensor based devices have come up so models of some storage uh, systems i'm sorry for the spelling models of some storage systems uh, like you can have such cement tanks and this is the brick jar type container while well, here you can see some eco friendly you know biological friendly material that was used with clay in kenya and uh, here underground lime water brick tank like this depends upon the space that you have and the technique that you have and this is the storage container in sri lanka while here we can have in uh, our urban areas definitely if you have space you can come up with such good uh, tanks and you can have a range of tanks you know from small ones to huge ones all this uh, thing it depends on your facility that you have you know how much facility you have and all just a minute please i have to let in a person okay i'm sorry for that just a minute not going full screen just a minute yes water storage capacities uh, what sort of water storage capacities should we recommend so here before recommending you should know the rainfall quantity in that area and the seasonality in that particular area where you want to recommend it uh the area and the catchment surface that a particular household or an apartment has then the volume of storage tank that you have to decide and then quantity and period of use required for water supply purpose with this one you should know how much quantity and period of use of the required water supply so there are two common ways used uh, to estimate this uh, storage requirements one thing is storage required method one is storage required for dry period like whenever you don't have rainfall okay you simply assume that yes you get sufficient rainfall and you have adequate catchment area and you try to get all that and roughly you'll be estimating how much i need the tank size and you'll be just going ahead with that thing and second me method is based on rainfall and water demand patterns this is simply directly is yes, this much of dry period i have some two months i don't get rains so this much of gallons of water is required so accordingly you plan by here the demand pattern per month also you can estimate so before that you should have an idea of the rainfall pattern throughout the area year you you go ahead with planning some graph put up put up some graphs and all say for example here direct directly go with the example so this is a rainfall pattern in a particular area in september see there is no rainfall and here this is a school which has around 65 students and five staff 
and assuming the water consumption to be just five liters per day per person, and the rooftop is two hundred meters squares. So the runoff coefficient was estimated to be 0.9, and here you can see for five persons the average need it goes to around 350 liters. So per year, how much do these five persons uh, like do they need? How much do they need? So per year, these people they'll be needing. My here it is five liters per day. So they'll be needing around one lakh twenty-seven thousand seven hundred and fifty liters. Okay, monthly it comes to around one twenty-seven point seven. Uh, sorry, ten point six five meter cube per month. And they have come up with the graph and put up all the things. And if this is the rainfall pattern, and if this is, if this is the rainfall which is harvested, which they could harvest with that cut off coefficient, and if this is the demand, okay, here you can see that the highest demand is in the April, obviously. as demand is in the april based upon this they'll be planning <coughs> excuse me based upon this they'll be planning their storage containers now coming to the gutters <coughs> their shape, shapes and dimensions gutters are nothing but uh, like when the rain fall comes na you should create a path so that the rain fall moves down so you can have them With various shapes, semi-circular, U-shaped, rectangular, trapezoid, even V-channels. And coming to the configuration, yes, you have this G-shaped gutters. If this is the rooftop, rooftop, this gutter you'll fix it here. Okay, and you leave a gap here so that the water is going into this. While here, this is the extended V. This this is the V. Wherein the water goes in, and again you can channelize it. You can channelize it. You'll be collecting all the connecting the gutters. So here uh, you can understand this. So the, here it is flowing here, and you are channelizing this. Here also from the roof it is flowing here. You are channelizing this. Here also V shaped, typical V shaped, U shaped. All these are the various gutter systems which we have, where you can channelize the water which is collected. so here you can see this is the rooftop and this is the gutter which they have placed a u shaped one so when the water is falling they'll be falling on this and from here they'll channelize it they'll place it in in such a way that the water runs by gravity and you can also go for this plastic sheet guttering where you have the plastic sheet as the water falls you'll collect the water here and channelize it into a container which is placed Here you'll have the sea, and directly it goes into the container kept below. So many small, small designs. You know, you not invest a lot. Small, small designs are there, which you can plan according to the financial uh, status of the family which wants to have this particular thing. Next one is first flush system. This is to reduce the contaminants. We all know that when rain falls, initially it collects all the dust. whatever the dust that is there on the roof whatever that is there in the air also that is captivated by the rain drops and they come down and this has to be let out so for this they put up this first flush system okay here you have the pipes wherein you just open the pipe and allow the water to run down initially and this they usually use a pvc pipe with a dimension of 75 mm and it can be 1 to 2 meters long and this is the removable cap and this is the storage container initially after letting out few of the things then you close it you plug it so that you plug this so that the water is diverted into this tank this is what is first flush trap or first flush system to remove the contaminants basically we try to resume the contaminants so uh, this is the design how it goes this is the uh, catchment area and this is the gutter they have collected it through pipes and this has to go here into the storage container but before that to leave the initial water here they have put up a plug so you remove it initially let out the dirt and then close it so that the water goes inside and this is how the storage tank can get filled up so here you have even roof catch systems systems with filters 
okay fitted on the storage tanks directly you can have like this so this is the rooftop here you have the strainer you can have a strainer and here is the filter here are the filters this is the separator and here you have the manhole under the removable filter you have various screens and all this is the typical system so look at this filter how it is here it is looking very simple na no? so look at this filter what it has so when the water flows here you have the filter and look at the level of the pipe that is level that is allowing the water to flow into the main tank here you have the baffles which filter the large ones here you have the sieves which filter the smaller ones and as the water is coming here it gets filtered then it enters into this vent okay and meanwhile what happens is the sediments they get accumulated over here so preliminary screening of water is done preliminary filtration of water is done using these filters and this water is sent into storage containers then you can have this rainwater harvesting systems containing two components that is for house as well as for gardening purposes like that we can have two of them this is another model which i have taken from the net so you can see this is the surface area and you have the rainwater storage system here through the gutters it has come down okay and here you have the filters and all uh, here it is the centrifugal filter which they have put up see everything comes out of economy you know how much you can put it up and this is the main tank in which it is uh, kept there so here you can see uh, this is the b which is the calm inflow pipe which doesn't allow the sediment to get lifted up then here the c part it is a variable variable suction pump okay with fixed floating that allows the water to be pumped so this is the third component where you have the rain water supply system where you can pump it either for gardening purposes or you can again pump it into uh, you can pump it for your household purposes also from here it is diverted see here you can divert for washing uh, for this use as well as for gardening so multi purpose you can set it up according to your financial uh, status only and here is one example which uh, is a rainwater harvesting system in patan of nepal where they have put it up so this is the overhead tank which they have okay and this is the roof surface and these are the pvc pipes from the roof which are coming up and this is the first uh, phase storage drum and from here the water is let into the underground tank there you have the uh, six one here uh, you have the sediment discharge tap see this is the storage tank and already we have seen here that sediments gets deposited here also so this is the outlet to remove the sediment so we have the sediment uh, you have to clean this na so you need this sediment discharge one while you also have an underground tank which can accommodate around 50000 liters okay a big tank is kept here after filtration and sedimentation they pump it to this and from here they can lift it up again to this overhead tank so lots of clearance is done lots lots of filtration is done and this water can be used for all those flushings washings and all such things and here there here is one more thing uh, sorry for the image it is not clear but this is our uh, presidential estate in new delhi here about uh, 7000 residing people are there in the estate and daily they have around 3000 visitors and there is a big garden the mogal garden there and the water demand here per day in our presidential uh, palace or this estate is around 2 million liters and 30% of the water is coming from the ground water wells it seems so they have come up with this uh, rain water catchment system wherein you know they have to set an example for all of us and they have come up with this rain water harvesting system so they have a uh, lots of roof na so they have this uh, north side roof uh, and uh, you have lots of uh, the presidential palace has lots of surrounding area and all so they have come up with a large underground storage container of 1 lakh liters capacity okay 1 lakh liter capacity and uh, this is for the roof top thing there is also some uh, uh, runaway water now and what they did is they wanted to divert this water the overflowing water into two wells which they have dug okay so that the water will be recharged these wells will act as water recharge systems 
and they also had on the southern side one dry open well so they used that water also as a recharge pit okay so like this they are diverting all the water and they are trying to meet the basic needs of gardening because they maintain a huge garden which requires lots of water so that water can be met by this underground tanks as well as by directly extremely sorry by directly diverting the rainfall okay by directly diverting the rainfall into the underground like directly recharging the ground water they are contributing to ground water harvesting that is recharging so 50 meter deep recharge shafts were set up there okay to stand as an example so that's why i have shared this case study so we have lots of water lots and lots of water around but we people are like this only we people are like this we look at the pipe only for municipal water rather than thinking about this so we have to think you know we have to think about this ground water recharge there are many ways many ways what i have discussed are the things which we can do as individuals as residents of the urban areas or residents of apartments or as uh, individuals in any institution but there are several uh, large scale plans you know wherein you can go for using the huge surface areas available as natural aquifers these we call them as the natural aquifers you can use them and divert the supply, surplus rain water to reach to recharge the ground water so here in rural areas these are being used like those are the urban uh, ways which i have discussed in rural areas also they are using using this gully plug counter bund dug well recharge percolation tank check dam or cement plug or nala bund they call it and recharge shaft so this is the gully plug see water flows in gullies na so there you just put some things these are the natural stones which they have just put up so that they act as small check dams and when water is there obviously it will percolate down and this water can be used for some other purposes also so this is a basic simple gully plug which anyone can come up with and these are the counter bunding counter bunding these are the bunds or ridges uh, like these are like counter lines you can see these are like counter lines which are spaced around 5 meters to 20 meters depending upon uh, the land that they have so the first 1 to 2 meters uh, they are above the ridges of their uh, cultivate cultivation the area of cultivation just above the area of cultivation if this is a green area just above that they are coming up with catchment area so that they can meet the needs of the farming so this is how they are going for constructing of counter bunds based upon the area again which they have and this is the dug well recharge yes any old wells which are left out abandoned wells which are left out just fill them with the uh, rain water harvesting mechanism which we have already studied okay catch up that catch up the gullies divert them into this abandoned wells okay but before that you better put up some uh, barriers and all some meshes and all so that clear water enters here and which can be used for various purposes this is the duck well recharge method and you can also come up with percolation tanks whenever you have a small pit or if you have a surplus area in the villages just put up a small dam sort of thing just a construction so that you have this percolation tank here okay you have to plant it in such a soil that water starts percolating down thereby what happens is you are recharging the water into the lower layers so that your wells are getting recharged and this water can be used for household purposes so what you get is a very clear water okay at this end then these are the check dams which are built in uh, some of the villages check dams when rain water is coming you know here the rain water will be staying off so it will be staying there so that so that you can divert it when needed for agricultural purposes so let us see the advantages of implementing this rain water harvesting system there are several advantages first thing is we are saying that rain water harvesting you can reduce the water bill at household level will be using water for various purposes but if you can harvest it carefully filter it and use it for 
washing something you know washing something your water bill will be reduced of course in india we take it for granted we don't have much of water bills but your electricity bill will reduce that i can say next ecological benefit is definitely it is there see in an area when you are coming up with logging of water and all so there you are holding the water thereby it gets diverted for various uh, like the plants can use it the animals can use it some flora and fauna living in that area they can flourish by having some small chick dams and all and during this process what you are contributing to is you are reducing the erosion as it is moving down erosion will be taking place that is what is happening now on the slopes and all since there are no chick dams no proper forest growth is there see we are just chopping down the forest instead if you just grow the plants put up such uh, contours and allow the water to stay there then give some plantation and all soil erosion can be reduced water based erosion is also reduced water based soil erosion is reduced and one more thing is flooding around the buildings see we had uh, january some rainfall we had in ishakapatnam lots of rain is left on the road it was just run off water it went into the sea and many buildings are flooded if you can have a proper catchment system proper underground recharge pits no city will be flooded but there should be proper planning of storage containers and proper pit planning also is required which is again a designing aspect and you should have adequate means of irrigation purposes also you can meet that from this water you can meet your irrigation purposes the demand for ground water you can reduce it see huge apartments are coming three bore wells four bore wells 70 story and understand how much water we must be harvesting ground water so one should think about such buildings they should definitely have i think the gvmc should make it mandatory that every such apartment should have at least should meet at least 30% of their water from this ground water harvesting then only the situations will change so they'll they'll uh, reduce the demand of ground water and it helps finally conserve the precious natural resources which is a gift to us and uh, these are the various sources which i have referred to while preparing this talk and uh, i would like to thank the director of uh, nehru yuva kendra visakhapatnam for giving me this opportunity for sharing my views and uh, i also thank leela prasad sir i thank both of them for allowing our college students the youngsters uh, for taking part in this national uh, jal abhiyan awareness program through seminars thank you one and all thank you sir any queries if anyone has you can ask see the main aim is uh, to let you people know that we should be you youngsters should take the initiative of this national jal abhiyan okay you should be in a position uh, to educate the people around your dwelling uh, to tell them that it is mandatory that uh, Uh, you know everyone should have that uh, rain water harvesting system in their home i always tell them uh, you should have plants at home develop your own they uh, like generate your own oxygen so in the same way you should have uh, if you have individual houses better try plan for these things and also you should be in a position to educate people in your apartment in your dwelling okay 